I'm going to take you through how I created this scene and I'm going to put all the links to all the content in the description, the 3D model, the asset pack that I modeled to create it, um, the HDRI from HDR Aven and the backplate from, from Unsplash. The very first thing I did is just get a camera view in the scene as quickly as possible get a basic scene going and then get a camera view going that i'm happy with and what that does is that it it contains the project it takes the focus from here to here so it just streamlines my workflow and it gives me a, a point of focus so i don't lose time working on anything outside of the camera view before i just jump straight into 3d it is always a good idea to plan two things layout and composition so for this render i wanted the layout to be something like this where i have a primary focal area bottom left and then i wanted to balance that out with a secondary focal point um, and the reason it's lighter here is just to indicate that it's maybe out of focus or further back um, if i didn't have a secondary to balance that image um, I would be sitting with something like this where I can see the focal point would be very unbalanced I, ideally I want something like this to fall on the rule of thirds the rule of thirds is generally accepted to be good composition um, and you'd have a focal point on one of your lines of the rule of thirds so i'd have a focal point here and a focal point there and in camera in blender you can always work to your rule of thirds by clicking on your camera selecting it in the viewport scrolling down to viewport display composition guidelines and ticking thirds on so i'm going to make sure that i put this the landing floating dock and the boardwalk and the boats to be around here on this composition line and then I can work in camera positioning the rest of the dock and the boats on that line and working in camera is just going to guarantee that I don't spend time on anything that will not be in the final render. Once you have gone and downloaded this element kit, there's primarily two things that you'll notice. Number one, it is a modular kit of parts. And the reason it is modular is that creates a lot more flexibility in scene building than crafting one single object. Um, modular content just goes very far in terms of scene layout and design second thing you'll notice is that the scene is quite neatly organized and every modular set is parented to an empty what that does is it gives me the ability to control the parent object and therefore control the kit while i can still move the child object what it also gives me is the ability to select by parent so if i select my empty hit shift g then i can select the children of that group and then select the empty and that just very quickly gives me a very nice way to move and lay out assets in the scene Right now I've got all my assets, modular assets in the scene and I'm ready to start and I have my reference in my UV editor. It is a good tip to put your reference in your UV editor. It saves you going between Blender and Windows Image Viewer or between Blender and Purev or between Blender and Google Slides or whatever it is that you are using. It's just handy and accessible when it is over here. So just moving everything out of the way and I'm going to start building the core of the scene to where the camera, the focal point will be. I'm going to build that around the center of the scene and it is just very helpful just building over your scene zero coordinates. It just makes navigation a lot more natural becomes very awkward actually when you when you're building f far off to the to the left or to the right
that'll give me enough to put a camera in here get a focal point going so i'm just going to put a couple of boats in here give me a general idea i can always come in and move stuff around later if i'm not entirely happy with it and I'm positioning these like they would be anchored one to the other to the dock from there and then that should give me about enough I've got enough dock to come off screen and I could probably get a camera in here at this point and just pull it more or less to the position that I want so at this point I can bring up my end panel and just lock it to view and really just get that composition lines going and that'll enable me to place my landing um, on this third and put the focal point around here and i'm obviously going to tidy up this camera view and the focal point a little bit later just to make it more um, interesting this is just going fast and loose at the moment i've got something that i'm happy with i can work with this and um, let's start building out the dock at the back and put in the sea and the rest of the scene the camera view is looking a little bit flat and i want more perspective in my scene so i can select the camera in the view there um, and decrease my focal length to about 32 and then just move my camera in a little bit and that'll give me a lot more perspective on the subject uh, just angling the camera down a little bit and even moving a little bit more in and across the rest of the scene i can lay out um, but i want to keep an eye on the camera view while i lay that out the easiest way to do that is to bring in a second 3d view and do that from the top i can select my dock and my landing in the top view um, looks like i've got my camera selected as well and just copy that out uh, to the bottom until i'm more or less happy with that and move it on the x-axis until that landing is more or less um, about on the rule of thirds it's a quick thing to note when you are moving if you hold control you obviously snap to the grid um, and if you leave control or alternately hit shift um, then snapping to the grid is automatically disabled which really does help if you want to get the both the best of both um, those two ways of transforming and snapping so i'm going to leave that about there that does look right and then just copy this out to the back a couple of times um, and then i would be able to set up the um the water and the background i'm just going to rotate this about 20 degrees just to break that conformity to the parallel um, and just bring in this wedge that i have as part of the kit you'll see that in your downloads it's often useful to just break up the just the normality um, everything doesn't have to be in a straight line um, same with with breaking up symmetry um, it's often good to just disrupt the the norm so quite happy with that the way that's looking at the moment then it's time to bring in the background and i'm going to just align the background image to the camera limits so let's bring that in here um, and you should see images as planes uh, when you bring in an image if you don't you can activate that by going edit preferences um, and you can search here and that will give you import export images planes you can then just tick that on by default it is off and then save your preferences so with that done Let's bring in an image as a plane, as a background. Um, let's grab that image. It's from Unsplashed. You'll see that in the link as well. Um, and then I'm just going to get it 
to more or less the right place and scale it up now I realize that my camera view doesn't match the background image that's fine at this point um, I'm just looking for getting everything in my scene and with the background in place it means I can set up my water um, and I'm going to set up the water in a way that it looks like um, like water in a in a river with a bit of wind on the surface so we'll see those ripples on the surface and obviously to do that we're going to need a shader with a bit of bump and we'll have to stretch that bump um, just to make it a little bit more realistic on the noise level so I'm just going to shift A and search bump so we'll see bump there alternately you can add it to a quick menu so hit Q and you'll see bump there so I'm just grabbing it from my quick menu and then plugging a noise into the height of that so right now if I apply my rotation and scale and shift control click my noise texture it'll give me an in-screen display of what this node does in that view but it'll only give it to me if I've got node wrangler enabled again it's a preference thing if you don't see this then enable node wrangler in your preferences and hit save right now I can see that the scale here is way off and doesn't represent water well so I'm going to up it to about 150 which looks better only problem being that water when it gets blown by a little bit of wind is often quite streaky and long and it's not blotchy or patchy like this so I know that I'm gonna have to hit control T on this to just get mapping coordinates and I'm gonna scale the mapping coordinates in one direction which would give me that water look to see what that looks like in scene I'm just going to have to bring my roughness down quite a lot. Water doesn't really have roughness. Um, and then hit shift control and click on that to give me this node as the preview. Um, so now if I go to the render view, then I can start. See Let's just crank up the light in the scene. Then I can start seeing the ripples in the water so now we've got everything that we want in the scene we've got the water in and we've got the background in so it's time to just start moving those things around um, and getting everything into the right place getting the camera view into the right place so I'm just going to pull this background up and I'm going to pull it up in a way where the line down here meets the edge of the water that's going to be the most natural looking for this also this part of the scene does look quite blank so i'm just going to add a couple of boats in there just to fill up this space a little and just hit that background which is selected hit the water and hit h just to hide that for the time being um, and then i can just bring this over here as well now these boats kind of boats are often tied with their noses to each other and then tied to the dock and that's exactly what I'm trying to replicate here um, with that done I can bring back my my, my um, river or the water in the background and then put in an HDRI and a Sun the intention with the sunlight is that I want to hide the blend where the water hits the boat um, so I know for me to do that the Sun is gonna have to come from the back so I need to just reorientate my scene view so obviously if I hit one I'll hit f I'll land in the front view but if I hold control and hit one it'll automatically go to the back same with the top if I hit seven I can go to the top if I hit control seven I'll go to the bottom so I'll hit control one and get to the back view and just add a Sun I've already placed one in here and just point it 
that way into the camera you'll notice that's my camera this is the sun directionality is into the camera so that is my sun i'm going to keep the settings quite standard normally it's on one i put it on 0.75 um, and then make sure that i've got some global lighting as well in the form of an hdri this is more directional and hdri will give me more of a fill so let's just add that here in the backgrounds tab hit that the color add an environment texture um, and add the hdri which is also in the downloads you'll find it there now i'm just going to half this right off the bat and then we can do a render and see what that looks like or do a screen render so the color of the water is obviously quite disruptive that needs to be a lot darker um, otherwise it looks awkward when compared to the background as well um, this does kind of look a lot better already even have a slight maybe not that much but a slight green tinge to it to get it to blend into the scene a little bit more what would also help settle the scene a bit is adding some shallow depth of field which means the focus will be around here um, and not around there best way to add depth of field is to tie it to an empty so if i want depth of field to be more or less on the landing here then i can or the floating dock i will just place my 3d cursor there hit a shift a and then add a empty and i'll add a cube so let's add a cube um just move it where i can where i can see it what i normally do is i name something according to its function when it's an empty like that so i can hit viewport display and just tick name so right now it's empty 0.26 or not 26 and i'll change that to empty focal point um, so now when i add or tie that camera to it i know that if i move this empty called focal point then it'll adjust the focal point one of the things to note with an empty is that you can never scale it and reset that scale because it'll always reset to its default um, size it's not like a um, like a standard cube that you can scale if you want to adjust its size you have to do it in here so i'm just going to make that slightly smaller um, and then go find my camera and hit depth of field and then select that empty so now it'll give me depth of field and depth of field will start fading out towards the back you can adjust depth of field here obviously the lower you go the more blurry it'll get towards the back and obviously trying to not overdo it i think that's probably good enough to go and see what a test render looks like now it's important to when you do test renders uh test renders is probably one of the biggest pitfalls for beginner 3d uh, artists um, in that you lose a lot of time doing test render after test render so right off the bat i can keep samples quite low but also i can come in at half of the resolution size i don't have to do full resolution test renders the scene is starting to look good um, but a couple of things to to point out at this stage that this behind here is very uh, dark i don't necessarily want to up my global lighting um, i'm just going to hit ambient occlusion and that's going to bring up the lighting in the scene a fair bit um, but what it is also going to do uh, is it'll increase a little bit of contrast where object meets object um, and that is just going to help the scene along a little bit however if the scene is brightened somewhat by this then i'm just going to tone down the color of the water quite a bit 
that's the one thing I'm going to do. The second thing I'm going to do is in my um, color management settings, I'm going to um, just select a color management preset that has a little bit more contrast. So you can see here, um, scrolling down from the settings into color management, I can select none, which it is by default, or medium, which it's not much of a change, or high contrast, which high contrast in this case might be a little too much, but I'm going to just start off there, give that a go. Second thing I'm going to do is just look at the aspect ratio. Right now the scene is more interesting on the horizontal than it is on the vertical. Vertically there's quite a lot of dead space and I want to bring the framing in so that more of the scene is filling the frame, more of the active scene and elements are actually sitting in the frame. So what I'm going to do is just select a render resolution that has a tighter crop. So 4K 1600p has quite a nice crop. You can see the camera has just shrunk vertically. Um, and that is exactly what I want in terms of layout, but I just need to adjust my camera accordingly a little bit um, and then bring this scene in just to make it, give it some more visual interest. At this point, it's a, it's a good time to bring this render into Photoshop, which does make me want to highlight something. Um, your render or visual doesn't need to be entirely 100% completed in a 3D package. Um, or more often than not, you can really enhance it by either bringing it into Photoshop if it is a still, or bringing it into After Effects if it is um, an animation. There's no rule that says the entire project has to be finished inside of Blender and it's a good idea to use pro programs that are suited to the job um, in a way that makes sense. For instance, 3D, do the 3D side in your Blender and then for post-processing, do that in the program that is best for that. Um, there's a couple of things I want to do with this image. Obviously, color balance, fix that a little bit. We can see the back plate um, has a different tone to the rest of the image. So we'll fix that first and do a little bit of fake focal depth and then also add um, a little bit of lens blur as well as chromatic aberration. So the best way to fix this is just giving me a little bit of an area of selection to work with. So I'm just going to create a layer and then do a very fast and loose paint over the area that I want to adjust in terms of hue and saturation or rather not hue and saturation but color color balance and when i now control click this switch that off and select the base image or the base layer and add a color balance i can see there's a lot of cyan in this image and to look a lot more like this or conform to the rest of the visual, I would need a little bit more red um, and not cyan. So I'm going to go plus 20 on the red and that should more or less even out the, the image at this point. So I can stamp the visible layer on that, shift control alt E um, and then keep this as a backup and hit control J that will just duplicate this and this will stamp the visible layer of those um, right now with this I want to add a little bit of lens distortion which will give me a bit of chromatic aberration what that is in a real camera is the failure of all colors to focus on the same point now also it is worth noting this is a little bit of a fad in the 3d at the moment in rendering um, we actually see quite more often than not uh, too much chromatic aberration, more so than what would normally be the case in real life. That being said, sometimes um, the aim is not to replicate real life, but to be better or more um, 
I suppose more than real life is the best way that I could put it. Um, so what I'm going to do here is just work on the red channel. So I'm going to switch off the, the other channels, hit the red channel, and then come over to filters and hit camera raw filter. With that selected, I'm just going to hit a minus one on distortion. So you can see what happens there when I hit minus one. Um, you you get a little bit of lens distortion on that image. Um, so switching on the other channels again, um, if you zoom in closely, you'll see that it's created that chromatic aberration. I've got the green on the one side and the red on the inside. Now this is probably too much, so I'm going to just half the visibility on that layer, um, and that gives me this effect. Again, it is one of those things where it is very much a fad in the 3D, and I suspect that the use of chromatic aberration sometime in the future, in the year or two, is going to radically tone down. Um, it's quite quite often being overdone at the moment. So that's that. Again, Control Shift Control Alt E to stamp the visible layer. Um, and what I'm going to do now is to select an area with a very soft selection. Um, and that'll become my um, almost target for focal point. So everything in red is going to be defocused. If I hit Q, um, then it'll show me the quick mask. And everything not red inside on this part of the image is going to be my focus, focus area. So in focus, defocus. And the way to set this up is go into channels. Um, I've already done it here, but to create a new channel, um, just give it a name, let's call it Lens Blur, hit OK on that, and then on this mask, just invert it, um, hit Control i and that'll give you the white on the bottom in your selection. So just coming back into my Layers tab at the moment, um, if I select my top layer and hit Filter, Blur, Lens Blur, then I can select that layer that I made in my channels and based on that it'll depict the focal area. Now obviously you can adjust this, but again it's very easy to overdo any of these settings, so my recommendation would be to keep it quite, quite mild um, and then you can OK that Last but not least, it's just standard brightness and contrast that always does help an image. That is it for this image. Um, very, very basic stuff. If you do enjoy this kind of tutorials, let me know. Um, there is also a course on buildings and how to make buildings that will be coming up soon.